Okay, we are going to be working on this guy. It's a Sharp RT 1165 from about 1980. And it is in pieces already because I've already taken it apart. Uh, most of it anyway. Um, so the problem was it wouldn't play tapes. And we're going to go take a look at the mechanism. Now I've removed it and then go from there. So this is the mechanism. Now straight off the bat you can see <coughs> gunk all around the idler tire, the idler wheel. It's nothing but a gunky mess. <coughs> also, noticing right away, the gear, the orange colored one there, has disintegrated. Let me see if I can get a better shot. And I've already taken the little E-clamp off. And we're going to replace that as well. Also fun, that is the capstan motor, and or well, with the belt on it. It was so gunked up that I had to use a Dremel to remove the rubberized gunk. Now this was before I knew you could take this whole thing apart properly. So we're going to learn a little bit together. I'm going to retake it apart and try get all that cleaned up really nice. You can also see some bits of old funky grease on the mechanism there. And we're going to clean it and put some more on there. Hey, good morning. We are experimenting with our camera mount here, uh, which I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, so you can be fans free from above, shooting from above. But uh, go ahead and feel free to tell me what mount you use because this is the second one I've tried that is too bouncy. I need something fixed and firm so we can work. Anyway, I'm going to start taking this thing apart and uh, meanwhile we'll chat a little bit about oh, hold on. let's try that again so good morning we're going to start taking this thing apart if any of you have a mount you like to use to keep your camera still uh, when it's shooting from above let me know so we're going to take off this cover we need to get <laughs> we need to not make too much noise we need to get this right here exposed so we can uh, remove it we need to clean it as I had mentioned, it was so dirty. You can see some of the paint right there. That's all messed up. Oh, by the way, I'm also shooting this upside down. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, um, let's see if we can get the cover off. It has 
as I recall, this thing pops out. Um, let's you gotta be careful when you work on these. There's a lot of stuff attached and you need to take pictures of where it goes. Let's see if I have a screw on this side. Okay. The case of the hidden screws. <laughs> what you have to do, they look like the solder, so there's one here. And we're going to pull that off. I also unclipped some of the wiring. So, let's see. Use a little white bowl for yourselves. And, let's see. Let's kind of, I've had this off before. Oh, there's another one. Sorry. <laughs> it's like finding where's Waldo with the screws. Sometimes. Carefully, while I'm doing this, I will tell you a little of my background. I have no electronics training, um, but I have a great interest in how things work and tape in general because, oh boy, look at that little guy. Where? Yeah, you see this? This guy right here. Yikes, he's tiny. So let's try to get him up. Oh, and put him in the bowl. Use a white bowl so you can see everything. Apologies for the... Okay, so this is loose. And let me see if I can get a good shot underneath. Light. It's auto focusing on the wire bale there. So, what we're going to do is undo that <coughs> middle screw, this one, this one, and try to take out the big swirly gig here. Because we need to clean it. Um, you know, if you have one that's got bumps and lumps, you're going to hear a flutter and things. So, alright, let's give this a go. Apologies for this. Well, the first 20 years of my career, I spent at Goddard Space Flight Center at NASA, starting in the mid-70s. I was, uh, Started as 19 years old. I got what you're seeing here is the Xerox Sigma 5 computer mainframe uh, and one of its the tape drives, and that's the kind of thing I worked on back when I first started. It has vacuum chambers on the right and the bottom, they're two uh, vertical line looking things, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, boy, it took a lot to bring that guy up, and tapes are whirling and going. Just like a uh, old monster movie, I guess, nowadays. <laughs> you see the stuff in the background. I got hired as a, a computer operator, uh, you know, while I was in college. Let me see if I can get the other one. There's one. Can you see that one? I think so. And I went to work uh, on the mission of Landsat 3. I'm sorry, 2 at the time. And they were doing image processing. Now, nowadays, you would take out your phone and take pictures or a camera, and it's processed <laughs> pretty much as quick as that. All right, so that's that. Okay, that's going to need 
see the end? Let me see if I can get it. See the dark middle there? You need a little bit of tiny grease on there. So, you know, because it touches the center point. So I've got some pictures for you of me back in the, it's actually the mid 80s then. I was recording Landsat 4 and 5 real time image data. You would start the recorder, tape recorder, a big one, 30 track. We only use 28. Um, and you would start it and record a live pass uh, of the satellite as it came over the ground stations. Um, they didn't have the network of communication satellites like they do today. Everything had to be sent to the ground uh, first. And it was real exciting. I'll show you a few pictures. Hey -o. So this is uh, me back in about 1984 in front of these 28 track high density digital recorder. And they were made by Martin Marietta and uh, Honeywell, I think. I can't remember. But boy, one tape on there, 9,600 feet, uh, you know, one pass of thematic mapper data would be like the whole tape because it ran so fast at 100, 120 ips. You can imagine uh, the thing looked like it was in fast forward. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was me caught in the act there. Um, rewinding, it looks like, a tape after a satellite pass. Well, I hope you enjoyed those. I certainly enjoyed working there. You know, you were doing something for a mission. I went on to work on uh, 15 total missions. Um, not recording image data for all of them, but all of them had tape drives. That was the main source of computer uh, storage, was nine track tape drives. And of course, the, for the image processing, it was 30 track, 28 tracks actually. And what was really neat was it, um, you could see as it's recording, it came up on a television screen, uh, not a flat screen, an old school black and white television that uh, you could see where you were taking pictures. So you knew approximately where in the world you were at the time you were taking pictures. I am trying to ease this out and trying to figure out how it comes out. Yeah, it looks like it's there's a piece of plastic in there. Let's have a look. Okay, if you look right down. Let me see if I can get a corner. Right down in there. I'm trying to see if I can pry that off. But let me uh, fuss with it because on this side, it's this thing that spins when you turn your cassette deck on and it basically engages all the gears and me mechanism uh, and as you can see we're going to change this guy because it is completely disintegrated due to the age so let's have a look at the front here okay so I think I got it what you have to watch out for, there's a little, where is it? <laughs> there's a little plastic thing right there that, be careful not to lose it, it's a little washer, and it needed a little help to get sort of unstuck, and then you're able to pull, uh, here we go again, it's hard to do sometimes, and you don't want to break it, you just want to wiggle it, there we go. Oh yeah, this definitely needs some work. And then, don't lose that. A lot of little parts. Um, so if you're going to do this, you have to be a little patient. And uh -oh, something came out here. We're going to have to figure out where this goes. Oh, I think I know where it goes. It goes over the light, wherever that disappeared to. 
uh, holds the light that's behind the cassette. So it lets you know how much you have left. Now in here, as you can see, I'm trying to come in a little. Um, it's just a, um, a hole <coughs> where this goes through. Now you can see all the gunk on there. We're going to have to clean all that off because it will grease as it gets older. Now this is 42 year old grease, right? Now you can see what happened to the wheel. I had to take a Dremel and try it. It's pretty smooth and I'm, I'm thankful for that. But you see this right here. You have to, we're going to get some alcohol and you're going to have to do that. Now the one thing, let's talk about the Sharp cassette deck we're working on. Uh, back in 1978, I was all of 20. I bought my first stereo and had a sh this basic model, a cheaper model of this one, um, called the Sharp RT. I think it was the 1155. And <clears throat> it's etched in your mind. It's like your first car or something. And we, man, I recorded like radio shows. And remember, no internet, <laughs> no no iTunes, no Spotify, no nothing. Just what was coming over on the radio or your own albums you could record. Vinyl. So we would, so I fell in love with that deck. <clears throat> it's long gone, but we have this one. I actually have another one of these upstairs already fixed. But it's really neat. Um, I just want to see if I can fix one. Uh, just because, you know. And uh, I just fell in love with those. And I, I understand Sharp has a bad reputation uh, with cassette folks. Um, well, I have no idea because this is the first one I've ever worked on. But the early models of all the cassette decks are more mechanical. Um, and uh, they're built pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of metal and good stuff in here. So we're going to go ahead and uh let's see if we can't get this running also very big classic rock fan what they call now back in the day it was called rock and roll <laughs> and uh the who led zeppelin pink floyd you know and we're gonna get this guy working so let's see if we can clean it up hey there folks don't forget to subscribe like and comment on what you see here we've got more episodes coming real soon uh, look forward to hearing from you in the comments below.